Okay, so we will talk uh, briefly about one uh, other classifier which is called a Bayesian. A Bayesian classifier. The Bayesian rule is very important for statistics and for doing a lot of things. One of them is classification. Okay, so the main idea is that we take a probability, probability of y given x, probability of the label given the features. Okay, that's why it's intuitive because you are trying to calculate the probability of the uh, prediction given the feature and the weights. Okay, this would equal something that we call the likelihood multiplied by something called the prior over marginal. So again, this is called the likelihood. Okay, and this is prior, and this is marginal. Okay, this is called posterior. This is our posterior probability. Okay, so this marginal probability is nothing more than just summing over different classes of the likelihood. So we take basically this likelihood and we sum over the classes that we have. And this is actually like an analogy to what we were doing with softmax, because with softmax, we took one probability and we divided over the summation of different probabilities. So it's almost like this, a likelihood, and then we are uh, dividing this by the summation of all the likelihoods. And the prior, we will talk about in just a minute. So let's consider an example. Let's consider that we have different categories. Let's say that we have red and green, okay? And this is our feature that we are extracting. It would be very, very easy to calculate a probability from that because you can just count how many red, okay, out of all samples and convert the X value to a probability, right? You can also count how many green, and you will just be able to convert this into a probability, correct? But the, is, the issue is that it is not really a probability. When we are getting the value of the features, it could be something like this. Could be something like this, something continuous. Okay, so that's actually difficult. So how would we get a probability from something like this? There are two approaches. One of them is called a non-parametric approach. And we say that this is a data-driven approach. The data-driven approach is basically by constructing like a histogram from your data. A histogram is constructed by taking uh, a bandwidth, let's say from zero to three, Okay, and you will be counting how many of your values are falling on this bin. So for instance, we have two, then the value for this bin will be two, counting just the frequency of that. And let's say here we have one, okay, from three to six, in the second bin it will be one value. So it will be here, one value, one value. So any problems with this? Oh, no. Okay, and then you will go on on your data and construct your histogram like so. Okay, so right now we have a histogram of frequencies, like how many incidences for each one of them is repeated in our data. So if we need to convert this into a probability, into a probability density function, then we need to take every frequency and divided by the summation of all frequencies. Is this clear? Mm, yeah. Okay. So right now, we'll just take every value and divide it by the summation of that. Then we will have a probability density function. So by doing this, a probability density function is very simple because this would mean that it's a probability distribution that will just add to one. Because if you sum 
over all of these points after uh, this normalization, converting them into a probability, they will add to one. It's very similar to what we're doing with, with softmax, okay? Okay, so that's the non-parametric approach. What about the parametric approach? The parametric approach said that, okay, let's describe our data using something called the sufficient statistics. So basically, we will get some measures that are sufficient to describe our distribution. Okay, so let's just keep that in mind and we will take this idea to the next uh, slide because there is no space here, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the main idea was that let's describe our, let's describe our data with a, a distribution that will be um, very closely able to describe uh, such data. One of these distributions is called the normal distribution, the Gaussian distribution. And the Gaussian distribution is basically saying something very nice. It's saying, get two measures, get two measures from, you, from your data, get the mean, okay, get the mean, and the standard deviation from your data, and I will be able to construct a distribution based on that. Okay, so Gauss came with this very nice uh, equation, okay, to have just two parameters, mu and sigma, the standard deviation, and he was able to formulate this equation uh, for which we will just be uh, be able to get uh, the probability density function uh, for each of our values and build such uh, distribution, okay? Okay, so that's nice because you can now do this for each of your uh, variables, okay? And you can also do this for a combination of variables, but this is uh, something else. It's, in any way, it's called the multivariate Gaussian, if you would like to look uh, at that. So anyway, back to the uh, Bayesian classification. It's actually called the naive, naive uh, Bayesian. So why is that? Because it has two assumptions. Okay, it's called the naive because of the first assumption, because it's assuming that the features are independent. Okay, so it's basically calculating this probability for for the feature, okay, for every feature, okay? So it's assuming independency of features. The second assumption, it's what we were just talking about. It's assuming that the data is normally distributed. So the data is following a Gaussian uh, distribution. Okay, so we have two assumptions. Okay, and if your data, of course, is not uh, normally distributed, this would be uh, an issue because it's an assumption uh, here. And there are some measures like the kurtosis to measure if your data is uh, skewed or uh, following uh, the normal distribution. Okay, now back to the classifier. It will be very easy to calculate uh, this now. So we basically have uh, two uh, features, okay? And what we can do, we can take the mean and the standard deviation as we were uh, saying, okay? And calculate um, our uh, normal distribution. So by the way, the standard deviation is basically measuring how much uh, there is a uh, variance. It's basically the square root of the variance, okay? So it's by, like, by definition, it's just how much we are varying around the mean, okay? So if we have different values and we have a mean for this value, how much we are varying around this mean is describing the variance. So just by taking this literally, it's x, x, minus mu, how much we are varying from the mean, okay? 
And because we could be varying higher than the mean or lower than the mean, but the variance doesn't care about this because it's just variance. We take the square of that and then we just normalize by n or n minus one, according to whether we're calculating this on a population or a sample. But anyway, we could uh, say uh, that this is n or n minus one. Does it matter for now? So this is the variance. We get the square root of that. This would be our standard deviation. So it's essentially dependent on the mean. Okay, and this would be uh, good for later. Okay, so here we have uh, our first uh, distribution. So basically, for the first class and the second class, we will get the distribution, the normal distribution. So only using these points. Here, we will get our first distribution. So we'll get our first distribution using the mu and sigma from uh, the sport, okay? And we will just repeat this for different uh, ports. So for this port, for the second class first feature, we'll get our distribution. Of course, the distributions will be different according to the values inside. Okay. And the final uh, value here. Okay. So right now, let's think about an unseen sample. We now have something unseen that we need to test. So the only thing that we will do is just projecting this on our distribution. Meaning that here we have different values and here we have a probability because we just converted this uh, into a probability, okay? We have different values and then we have probability because that's PDF, probability density function. So if there is something very close to the mean, it will have a very high probability. And I think that's intuitive because the mean would be basically the expected value. That's why people are calling this the expected value. Because if you are drawing, let's say, a random sample from this distribution, it's really expected that this value will be around the mean because it has a high probability around the mean. Okay. So let's say that we have an unseen sample. This un unseen sample will have a value, okay, for x1 and x2. Okay, so it's like that it will have a value for x1 and value for x2 and we'll just see where this value is on the distribution so it will be here so this would give high probability okay and let's say it was here in this distribution and perhaps it was here and it was there in this distribution okay Okay, so what would be the output of such a classifier? This classifier would basically multiply the probabilities, okay, and get the final uh, output. So it would basically take, let's just by intuition, see this probability, it's a high probability, okay? And this probability is also high probability. So high probabilities for plus one, compared to low probabilities, low probability and low probability for plus two, okay? So it's really intuitive to see that because the values are falling near to the mean of this distribution and this distribution, most likely they are belonging to class one. So what this classifier will be doing is basically calculating the posterior probability by taking probability of x giving y this is the probability of x given y that we were calculating this is the probability density function okay it will be calculating this for the first for the first uh, feature for the first feature okay and it will be also calculating this for the first uh, for the second uh, feature Okay, and it will be multiplying them. Okay, so importantly, if we have two events, okay, that are independent, we say that 
the probability of the two events happening together is just the product, the multiplication of the two probabilities. Okay, and this is exactly what the Bayesian classifier is doing because it's assuming that the features are independent, it's taking the probability, um, the product of the probabilities uh, of them. Okay, so we get this. Okay, all of this for class one. We multiply this by the posterior probability, uh, sorry, the prior probability. The prior probability is simply how many, how many of our samples are belonging to class one. Okay, so it's just the count of samples belonging to class one. And how many of samples are belonging to class two is also uh, considered because there is one minus uh, this value. So our prior uh, for class one could be 0 0.6. This would mean that the prior for class two is 0 0.4. And if the data is balanced, then this would mean that the prior is 0 0.5 uh, for both of them. Okay, it's a prior knowledge, basically. It's a prior knowledge that, that you know about your data. So prior to doing the classification, you know that your data contained 50% uh, of class one and 50% of class two. Okay, and then we just normalize this by this quantity for plus one, okay, that I just put here, plus, so instead of putting the summation, I'll just write down the equation, plus the same value, but for the same calculation, but for plus two, okay, and if we do this, if you see this part is belonging to class one divided by the summation of class one and class two, this will give us the posterior probability of this point falling in class one. Okay, and this is very similar to the softmax. Okay, and if we do this probability, the same probability, but we calculate this part for class two, to look by the prior over the summation, plus one and plus two, this would give us the posterior probability, posterior four plus two. And then we just compare the posterior probability of class one to the posterior probability of class two, okay? And then we assign uh, the predicted uh, class to the one with the higher probability, okay? So any questions on this? No. Okay, perfect. So um, I will have to end the lecture here because I think uh, we have taken enough, I think, in this uh, lecture. So I will leave it to you and instead of just uh, explaining more, I hope uh, that you look at this lecture and also this course uh, about the probabilities, okay, before uh, the coming lecture. And... Okay, so Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm I'm thinking that we might have the next lecture perhaps on Saturday or something like this, so that I give you time before the final exams. What do you think? Okay, that's that's good. That's good. Okay, so I actually also tried to finish almost everything that we had. So perhaps the next lecture will be like one hour. So don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. I hope that things are clear so far. And if something isn't clear, uh, don't be shy. Try to ask me or uh, go back to the recording because I think what we are learning here about supervised learning is really the essence of, of what you, you will be doing in AI uh, in machine learning or deep learning in general. Okay, so I really hope that you are enjoying the course uh, so far.